Hi all, welcome to the Loose and Main session by NEO IAS. Today's topic is air pollution. In that, we will see air pollution related to India and also we will have a comparison between air pollution in India and China, that is in Delhi and Beijing. And also we will be seeing how Beijing succeeded in reducing pollution and what are the lessons that we can learn from Beijing in reducing air pollution. And our topics are what is pollution, types, indoor pollution and outdoor pollution, pollutants, classification of pollutants, what is air pollution, reasons of air pollution in India, measures to improve air quality, air pollution in Delhi, main causes for air pollution in Delhi, assault of aravallis, solutions, rising of air pollution and lessons Delhi can learn from Beijing, how Beijing succeeded in reducing pollution levels and what lesson Delhi can learn from Beijing and how to tackle these problems and what Indian state must do to curb air pollution and its general solutions and initiatives by government to curb pollution and way forward. So, what is pollution? Pollution may be defined as addition of undesirable material into the environment as a result of human activities. In order to control environmental pollution, the government of India has passed the Environment Protection Act 1986 to protect and improve the quality of our environment, that is air, water and soil. Next, types. Pollution may be of the following types, that is air pollution, noise, water, soil, thermal and radiation pollution. Man-made pollution can be described at three levels, that is personal pollution. It is caused by an individual and is restricted to small area, for example, tobacco smoke, kitchen smoke, etc. Next is occupational pollution. It is due to an occupation which affects all the workers and some area around them, for example, jam cutting, stone crushing, textile mill, etc. These generally lead to occupational disease or hazards. Next is community pollution. It affects the whole community or area around the source of pollution, for example, thermal power plant and automobiles. Our next classification is indoor pollution and outdoor pollution. So first, indoor pollution. There are many sources of indoor air pollution that is tobacco smoke, cooking, heating appliances, vapors from building materials, paint, furniture, etc and other materials within the home that emit unhealthy chemicals. Next is the outdoor pollution. It consists of automobile exhaust, industrial emission and natural pollution. In that natural pollution, there comes wildfires, wind blown dust, volcanic eruptions and burning of fossil fuel. Next is pollutants. What are pollutants? Pollutants are any solid, liquid or gaseous substance that is including the noise present in the atmosphere in such a concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to human beings or other living creatures or plants or property or environment. A pollutant may be defined as a physical, chemical or biological substance released into the environment which is directly or indirectly harmful to humans and other living organisms. Next is the classification of pollutants. According to the form in which they persist after release into the environment, it is of two types that is primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. Primary pollutants, these persist in the form in which they are added to the environment, for example, DDT, plastic, then secondary pollutants. These are formed by interactions among the primary pollutants. For example, peroxyl acetyl nitrate that is PAN and it is formed by the interaction of nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons. The second classification is according to their existence in nature. It consists of quantitative pollutants and qualitative pollutants. 
Quantitative pollutants, these occur in nature and become pollutant when their concentration reaches beyond a threshold level. For example, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, etc. Then qualitative pollutants, these do not occur in nature and are man-made. For example, fungicides, herbicides, DDT, etc. So, next is the type of air pollutant. In that, primary pollutants, pollutants persisting in the air in the form they are released into it. It is of two types that is gaseous and solid and in gaseous it consists of carbon monoxide, SO2, nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons, etc. And in solid it is of two types again organic and inorganic and in organic it consists of smoke, fly ash, soot and fume. And in inorganic it consists of iron particles, lead and asbestos. And in secondary pollutants they are formed either by modification of a primary pollutant or reaction between two primary pollutants. This fusion of two primary pollutants to form a secondary pollutant is called synergism. And it is to be noted that the secondary pollutants are generally more harmful than the primary ones. Next is what is air pollution? We can define air pollution as the presence of any solid, liquid or gaseous substance including noise and radioactive radiation in the atmosphere in such concentration that may be directly or indirectly injurious to humans or other living organisms or sometimes maybe to property etc. An ever increasing use of fossil fuels in power plants, industries, transportation, mining, construction of buildings, stone quarries had led to air pollution. Fossil fuels contain small amounts of nitrogen and sulfur. Burning of fossil fuels like coal that is in thermal power plants and petroleum in petroleum refineries release different oxides of nitrogen and sulfur into the atmosphere. These gases react with the water vapor present in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. The acids drop down with rain making the rain acidic and this is called acid rain. Acid rain corrodes the marble monuments like Taj Mahal and this phenomenon is called as marble cancer. The other kinds of pollutants are chlorofluorocarbons that is CFCS which are used in refrigerators, air conditioners and as pressurizing agents in aerosol spray and CFCS damages the ozone layer of atmosphere. The combustion of fossil fuels also increases the amount of suspended particles in air. These suspended particles could be unburnt carbon particles or substances called hydrocarbons. Presence of high levels of all these pollutants causes visibility to be lowered especially in cold weather when water also condenses out of air. This is known as smoke and is a visible indication of air pollution. So in next slide this is a diagrammatic representation of formation of the photochemical smoke. Next we can look what are the reasons of air pollution in India. High dependence on coal for power, high levels of poverty, poor governance, access to technology, unplanned urbanization and continentality. Next we can discuss measures to improve air quality. As suggested by the Greenpeace, following measures can be employed to fight air pollution in the country. It includes improving public transport, limiting the number of polluting vehicles on roads, introducing less polluting fuel that is Paris 6 no, strict emission regulation, improved efficiency for thermal power plants and industries, moving from diesel generators to rooftop solar, increased use of clean renewable energy, electric vehicles, removing dust from roads, regulating construction activities, stopping myomas, burning etc. And our next topic is related to air pollution in Delhi. 
In that, we will look what is the recent concern. The Delhi NCR faces with difficult situation each winter when air pollution levels goes up out of control. Last year, the day after Diwali, air pollution levels were recorded at 8 times the safe limit in Delhi. In response, the Supreme Court appointed EPCA, a body empowered to enforce the Graded Response Action Plan, that is GRAP. The GRAP aims to roll out progressively tougher actions as pollution levels rise without waiting for an emergency to impose strict measures. The main objective of EPCA and GRAP is to institutionalize measures to tackle air pollution emergencies. Besides this, there was recently a ban against firecrackers in the national capital region also. Next we can look air pollution in Delhi. So, the air pollution in Delhi is due to natural factors as, as well as anthropogenic factors. Natural factors include low temperature in winter which leads to low wind velocity and which reduces the dust dispersal process. And in landlocked cities also there is no moderate sea effect. These two can be the natural factors. Then the anthropogenic factors include road dust, vehicular emissions, industrial vehicles, waste burning and improper waste management. Then what are the main causes of air pollution in Delhi? The national capital shares its border with the states of Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. One of the main reasons of increasing air pollution levels in Delhi is crop burning by the farmers in these states. Farmers burn rice doubles in Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. The wind carries all the pollutants and dust particles which have got locked in the air. Next, pollution caused by the traffic menace in Delhi is another reason contributing to this air pollution and smog. The air quality index has reached severe level. Vehicular emission is increasing the hazardous effects of air pollution and smog. Next, as the winter season sets in, dust particles and pollutants in the air become unable to move. Due to stagnant winds, these pollutants get locked in the air and affect weather condition and which results in smog. Another reason of air pollution is overpopulation in the capital. Another reason can be investing less on public infrastructure and in India, investment in public transport and infrastructure is low which leads to congested roads and hence air pollution. Large scale construction in Delhi is another culprit that is increasing dust and pollution in the air. Industrial pollution and garbage dumps are also increasing air pollution and building up smog in the air. Despite the ban on cracker sales, firecrackers was a common sight in Diwali. It may not be the top reason for the smog, but it definitely contributed to its buildup. Next we can look about the assault in Aravallis. So the Supreme Court reprimanded the Rajasthan government for its failure to check illegal mining in an over 100 hectare range of the Aravalli mountains. India's oldest mountain range has lost nearly a fourth of its hills. The Apex Court referred to a report of the Central Empowered Committee, that is CEC, the body that advises it on forest related matters. And it pointed out that 31 of 128 hills in the Aravallis have vanished. The loss of the hills could be a reason for the rising pollution level in the national capital region. Next we can look the solution for this problem. So the first one is solution for indoor pollution that is caused by biogas. Replacing biogas with LPG, the easiest would be to get all households to use clean energy for cooking with liquefied petroleum gas that is LPG 
or electricity. Burning of cow dung cakes and firewood for cooking not only harms the lungs and eyes of the woman, it is also a major source of all air pollution. Electricity is targeted to reach all households by next year. Its use for cooking can be promoted. Next is the LPG cylinders through Ujwala can be made to reach everybody in a few years. This can be done through a subsidiary from the government. So next is the solution for burning of crop residue. Crop stubble burning that according to the Harvard study, it is responsible for 50% of the pollution. So it is responsible for half of the pollution. An attractive enough price for crop residue for conservation of briquettes to be burned in coal fire station or for generating electricity directly through gasification would put an end to crop burning. The transition would be driven by private investment and without any subsidy. Thermal plants need to offer a viable price for briquettes and the distribution companies for electricity from crop residue. So next is the solution for vehicles. Facing out the most polluting vehicles such as old truck, buses and temples at the earliest is an unavoidable necessity. This has to be a countrywide measure as air pollution moves across villages and towns. The supply of fuel of contemporary international standards that is Paris stage 6, BS6 now being implemented and it would make a difference only gradually as more new BS6 compliant vehicles get on to the road. But for an immediate impact, all new taxi, bus and three-wheeler permits for running within the cities should be given only for electric vehicles. And sufficient number of charging stations would naturally need to be created well in advance also. Next is the solution for coal and thermal power plant industry. Old coal fired thermal power plants in or those close to major urban centers need to be closed down forthwith. All industrial clusters need a diagnostic audit for air pollution. Technically feasible measures with state financial assistance and in partnership with industrial units would have to be implemented to reduce air pollution. Clearly, the use of coal for energy and heating by small industrial units has to be phased out. Next, it is the comparison between air pollution in Delhi and Beijing and how Beijing succeeded. So first we can look the rising air pollution and the lessons that we can learn from Beijing. So Delhi and Beijing competed with each other for the infamous tag of being the world's most polluted city. While the air quality in Beijing began to improve steadily, the pollution levels in Delhi kept rising. In 2017, the yearly average concentration of PM2.5 touched 58 micrograms per cubic meter in Beijing. In comparison, the average concentration of PM2.5 in Delhi in 2017 was 130. So here you can see the comparison between the Delhi and Beijing. In the same year, the number of very unhealthy days, that is when the pollution levels were very high, that is called the unhealthy days, that in Delhi was four times that of Beijing. So our next slide is regarding how Beijing succeeded in reducing its air pollution level. So the effort to reduce air pollution in China started when Chinese State Council, it is the similar to the Council of Ministers or Cabinet in India. It passed the Action Plan on Prevention and Control of Air Pollution on September 12, 2013. This action plan had clear targets and well thought out measures to achieve them. Firstly, it adopted a regional approach to combat air pollution and identified key polluted regions. 
the three key regions identified for priority action were the Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei that is one region, then the Yangtze River Delta that is the second region and the Pearl River Delta it is the third region. So these three regions were identified. Secondly, it set specific pollution reduction target for these regions. For instance, the PM 2.5 reduction target by 2017 for Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei was set 25% below 2012 level. Specifically for Beijing, the action plan required that annual average PM 2.5 concentration be within 60 microgram per meter cube by 2070. Finally, to achieve this target, the action plan defines 10 measures and the 10 measures include first one development of integrated control effort for reducing multiple pollutants, second establishing regional coordination mechanism, third improving environmental regulation and enforcement, fourth establishing monitoring warning and emergency response systems, fifth clarifying responsibilities of different organs of the government, sixth accelerating technological transformation, seventh promotion of energy saving technology, eight environment friendly technology, ninth upgradation of industrial technology and tenth shifting of industry. So it adopt these 10 measures. So based on 10 measures implementation rules for action plan on prevention and control of air pollution were issued by Chinese Ministry of Environmental Protection on September 17, 2013. The rules clearly spelled out the action plan to control air pollution for different municipalities and provinces in the Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei region. Accordingly, Beijing's government formulated its Clean Air Action Plan and Air Pollution Prevention and Control Regulation. The Clean Air Action Plan of Beijing included specific actions and targets such as motor vehicle pollution control, control on pollution from coal, stringent regulation and enforcement and ecological restoration. So joint actions were done and these joint action include retirement of small coal fired boilers, pollution control in key industries, management of urban transport control of number of vehicles, improvement in fuel quality, retirement of old vehicles, enhancement of vehicle emission standards, relocation of the industries, strict enforcement of standards, clean energy supply and ecological restoration. So these joint measures are included. So as a result in a short period of four years the city's air quality has improved significantly. In 2017, Beijing recorded 226 blue sky days, that is blue sky days mean good air quality days compared to just 176 in 2030. In the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region, PM 2.5 levels have decreased by about 30 percentage between 2013 and 2017. Most importantly, Beijing met the air pollution target it had set for itself in 2030. So what lessons can Delhi learn from Beijing? A regional action plan and a regional coordination mechanism involving Delhi and its adjoining state must be put in place for concerted action. And the region needs time bound target for reducing pollution levels because without these targets action plans are meaningless. The action plan should be an integrated one involving all pollutants and all key polluting sources. Hard action rather than incremental change is the key to reducing pollution levels quickly. Without strict enforcement, all other measures will fail. So next we can look how to tackle this air pollution. First one, we can look how to tackle the pollution related to crackers. The Supreme Court ruling on the bursting of firecrackers has ordered that across the nation only green firecrackers 
that are free of chemicals and that emit certain toxic gases on combustion will be allowed and only between 8 pm to 10 pm. So, it is to be noted that this allowed only between 8 pm to 10 pm. And the crack up bursting on other festivals and weddings will also be restricted to the prescribed time window. So, next, Petcock. The Center for AIDS Park dodged the persistent demand on banned Petcock. It's a corn substitute that had a worse pollution impact. So, it's having a very worse pollution impact and it is declared to be banned this for August this year. Next is related to odd event. A more viable solution than odd event was completing the peripheral highways around the capital to lower the movement of trucks into the area. And while the capital has huge garbage fire in dumps and yet it gets burnt anyway if there is no dump. There has been no comprehensive solution for segregating and processing waste. Nor when it comes to crop burning has much headway been made. So next is related to raw dust. The Delhi government has talked of mechanized sweeping and water sprinkling. But what would be more beneficial is if the sides of the roads could be paved or covered with grass that holds the soil together and stop the production of the dust in the first place. Next is reducing the vehicle density. It needs the city to vastly improve its public transport instead of building more dedicated bus corridors. The Delhi government demolished the only one that exists. Next is related to stubble burning. Since the cost of the mechanized alternative to stubble burning are very high, farmers find it cheaper to pay fines even though both Punjab and Haryana have introduced renting of machines that are part of the mechanized alternate. Our next slide is related to what Indian state must do to curb air pollution. According to WHO, India must establish a time bound strategy to deal with this crisis. The center is yet to release the National Clean Air Program that is NCAP with a goal to meet the annual air quality safe standard at all locations within a specific period. One of the targets being considered is to reduce the PM 2.5 concentration by 35 percentage in the first five years of NCAP implementation in more than a hundred cities. So, which have not met the safe standard. And next measure is about 80 city air pollution action plans under NCAP have been finalized by the ministry. 36 others are being considered also. Next is the Central Pollution Control Board that is CPCB has commissioned some local health studies to understand health impacts of air pollution. But perhaps there is no time to waste. The state governments can make it legally mandatory for the city, state or district administration to meet the target. So next we can look some general solutions. So the general solution includes the green cover, the push to renewable, the urban governance, market for agriculture waste, better planning and coordination, forecasting system for better response and also health care for pollution related diseases and coherent environmental policy. Let us look one by one. Green cover. Increasing green cover especially in the urban areas must be an indispensable part of urban planning. Other initiatives such as afforestation, grieving of highways etc. must also be picked up. Next is push to renewables. Addressing the problem of intermittence by adopting smart grid technology Incentives for decentralized power production via biogas, rooftop solar and push to EVS and has been done in Norway and exemptions on tax, toll, parking free and then environment tax on other vehicles, charging station powered by renewables etc. should be done. Next is urban government. Better urban planning based on models like transit oriented development TOD then integrated and accountable transport authority, empowered local bodies, 
scientific waste management etc can help bring down pollution footprint of urban areas next is market for agricultural waste the problem of Crop burning can be resolved only through financial and technological support and incentives for farmers. Access to technologies like super seeder machines and development of market for crop stubble will push farmers to a cleaner method of waste disposal. Next is better planning and coordination. A single body on the lines of EPCA as mandated by the Supreme Court with clear targets and accountability mechanism is very necessary for effective environmental governance and next is forecasting systems for better response china has shown the way in controlling the pollution by an effective pollution forecasting that is two to three days in advance and monitoring system its permanent or even policy during severe pollution level early warning systems then strict enforcement of grap like action plans has significantly brought down the pollution levels in Beijing. Next is health care for pollution related disease. Pollution and its health burden are inevitable in the near future. Therefore, it is necessary to equip public health care systems with adequate resources for facing this emerging challenge and shield poor from catastrophic health care expenditures. Next is coherent environmental policies. Since air pollution knows no boundaries, states and centers have to harmonize their strategy to deal with it. Platforms like Interstate Council, apart from serving this objective, can also help resolve pollution-related disputes among states. Next, these are the initiatives by government to curb pollution. It includes early implementation of BS6, Green India Mission, electric vehicle, GRAP in Delhi, ban on diesel vehicle and crackers, Ujwala Yojana, Ode Even Policy, Smart City, Amrit. Next, National Air Quality Index that measures and monitors the levels of 8 pollutants. You can just look the 8 pollutants, that's PM10, PM2.5, NO2, SO2, CO, O3, NH3 and PB has to be implemented. And what are the way forward? Cleaning up of the air we breathe will help us to stand away from the NCDs. That is particularly among women and vulnerable groups such as children, those already ill and the elderly. We need a proactive policy spanning multiple years and we need to act fast, local and through multiple agencies across multiple political parties to take the long view on air pollution. Next is emphasizing the need for a comprehensive plan presenting systemic solutions and reminding government that a plan can be executed successfully only if all the stakeholders work in tandem. This template should also be adapted for other Indian cities that suffer from appalling air quality. Combating it must become a government priority. Next is a pragmatic approach. It should be taken to reduce the pollution level. Government has been working in right direction by setting goals, signing Paris agreements, etc. to curb this menace, but much more is needed at grassroots level to overcome this situation. Then air pollution does not recognize borders. Improving air quality demands sustained and coordinated government action at all levels. The bottom line is that the Delhi faces the same challenges of cleaning up its air as Beijing did a few years ago. What we lack is political willingness and public anger to force the government to take hard action. So, we need to remind ourselves that if we could raise Beijing to the bottom, we sure can raise it to the top. That's all for today's session and thank you for listening.